Hi, this is Debbie and welcome to Book and Bujo where I talk about all things books, bullet journals, and stationery. And today we're going to go through my Q1 book haul. I know we're not quite done with Q1, but I've got about 20 some odd books already that I've gotten so far in the last couple of months and I wanted to go through them with you before the stack gets too big. So first up is Cinderella Assassin, the first book in a glass slipper adventure by Allie Burton. And that just sounded so intriguing. I mean, Cinderella Assassin. Yeah, had to get that one. It says she yearns to fit in, but if humans discover her secret, her life will be no fairy tale. Next up is The Christmas Morning Massacre, which is the first book in the Raven Hill Butcher series by Nasser Rabadi. It just sounded interesting. And I love doing my 12 days of 12 books of Christmas reading readathon, so I thought this would be great for it. It says two murdered girls, a killer that was never found. Hmm. One thing I like about the Kindle books is it has a really short synopsis, so it kind of gives you a gist of what the book is going to be about, but doesn't give anything away, which I like. Next up is Tomes, Scones, and Crones, which is the first book in The Three Tomes Bookshop by Colleen Gleason. At 48, Jacqueline Finch has a nice, easy life with few responsibilities. She's been a librarian in Chicago for 25 years. She doesn't have a husband, children, or pets, and she's just coasting along, enjoying her books in a small flower garden now that she's over the hill. That is, until the universe, helped by three old crones, has other ideas. Next, I got The Way of Kings, the first book in the Stormlight Archives by Brandon Sanderson, and I loved this book. Already read this one. You can check out my uh, February wrap-up. I'll leave a link up in the cards for you. Next, I got The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Now, I actually already have this one that I got a while ago. It was like a one of the like a Penguin classic or something like that. Um, but this one actually has it. It looks like it has an excerpt. Um, including a special selection from Mrs. Poe by Lynn Cullen, so I thought that might be fun, but this raven on the cover is amazing. I love it. That's the main reason I got this one. I'm a sucker for covers. I am totally a cover by person. Totally. But I love the raven, so I was excited to get another copy of it. I also got Nature Our Medicine, How the Natural World Sustains Us, and this is by Dimity Williams. Find out how connecting to nature can boost your health and heal our planet. Join mother, nature lover, and family physician, Dr. Dimity Williams, as she explores the most important relationship we have, our connection with nature. I've read a couple of books on the relationship between nature and health, and it's so interesting, and I was really excited to find another book about that, and can't wait to read it. I was able to get the whole series, the box set of the Dragon Mage Academy, and this is by uh, Cordelia Castell. It's, there's seven books in the series, and I read this for an Amazon borrow, and I really enjoyed the whole series. It was, it was cute. It's YA, and it's just, it's adorable. I loved it, but it was an Amazon borrow, so I had to return it when I was done, so I was excited to pick up a copy. I was, I was actually able to get it for 99 cents, which was a great deal for a seven book box set and they're all, they're all around 300 pages or so. I think it's about a thousand pages for the full book. Nine, 900 something pages for the, the full seven book series. So she stumbled upon a murder. Now this princess must save a dragon from certain death. Pretty much sums it up. And it was kind of fun when I got this book and I went to pull up the cover to show you guys holding it up. It was actually on the last page I read when I returned it. So that was kind of fun and I actually remembered where I was which was basically a list of other books that Cordelia has written. <laughs> Next book I got was Illusions, Ravens of Darkness, and this one is by Ellie Preston. It's actually a really short book, basically just has one chapter in it, but it had Raven in the title, and I'm a sucker for ravens, so had to get it. An Ancient Cult, A Supernatural Addiction, A Forbidden Love. Excited to read it. Next up is Of Claws and Inferno, which is the fifth and final book in the Of Cinder and Bone series by Kokio M. And I've read the first two books, love them, and when I had a chance to get the next three, had to get them. In a modern day world teeming with marauding dragons, there was only one solution, the wild hunt. 
And the next two books I got are actually pre-orders, so I don't have them yet. It's uh, the, Chalice of God, the Chalice of the Gods, which is the sixth book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympians series by Rick Riordan, and that comes out in September. So excited. I love the Percy Jackson series. It's just is so much fun. I love the humor. It is so much fun. And here's Walter to say hi. <laughs> I want you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A little bit of a change in perspective. Walter wanted to come sit in my lap. <laughs> you sit too, sweetheart. Yeah, if you ever get a chance to get a pit bull, oh my gosh. They are the most snuggly dogs ever. I would totally recommend it every single time. Do so much fun. Never had a more snuggly dog. All right, the next book that's the pre-order is The Sun and the Star, and that is a Nico D'Angelo adventure, also by Rick Riordan. So I'm excited for that one. I'm not sure exactly where it's gonna fit in the whole universe of Percy Jackson, but I love Nico. He's one of my favorite characters and very excited to get another story from his perspective. And that one comes out in May. So just a couple more months for that one, I'm excited. So the next one I got actually goes along with uh, one of the other, let's move you a little closer. So the next one I got is actually the second book in the Ravenhill Butcher series and this one is Return to Camp Sologahatia, not sure exactly how to say that. And that's by Nasser Rabdi, let's see what it says. There's only one rule at Camp Sologahatia, stay away from the forgotten cabin. Hmm. So I actually worked at a camp on and off for about 20 years. My pa parents were actually the directors for quite a few years and um, I was the program director so I ran the summer camp for quite a few summers and also did stuff during the year, weekend retreats and things like that. It's always interesting to find books about camps. Especially, so I was actually at a church camp so it's a little different than some just regular summer camps. So it's interesting to see how other camps worked. <laughs> Sorry, the lighting is a little darker with the change in perspective, and I'm not quite so close because he's sitting on my stomach. <laughs> so the next book I got is one I've wanted to read for a while, and I, you hear a lot about it on BookTube, and that is Nevernight by Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. He is my uh, camera hound. She, he loves to be on the camera for some reason. <laughs> and on your lap. He's just adorable. Okay. Enough about Walter. So in a land where three suns almost never set, a fledgling, fledgling killer joins a school of assassins seeking vengeance against the powers who destroyed her family. Intriguing. And I love the cover. The cover is beautiful. So the next book I got is Insanity, the complete series, and this is by Cameron Jace. And I've actually... Read, I have and have read the first two books in the series and is so good. It's an Alice in Wonderland retelling and it's really interesting. I, again, I'm not a huge fan of the actual Alice in Wonderland story. I love the concept of it. I love the movie, the Disney movie, and I love retellings of it. This one is set in more of a modern day time period and it's just really interesting. I was so excited when I saw... So I keep trying to, every time a new book came out, I want to buy it, but I can't justify buying a whole bunch of new books, especially since there's more in the series still to come out and I haven't been prioritizing it. So when I saw that the full box set series came out and it was a really good price, I was like, okay, I have to get it. I have some money on my gift card still. Let's get it says it's the complete and finished series it includes all nine books it's 3,000 pages between all nine books but when there's someone mad in your neighborhood who are you gonna call nah not Ghostbusters but me Alice freaking wonder yes absolutely my name is Alice and I am mad it's a superpower you should try it sometime again yes totally gonna read it yes so the first two books, again, so good. I can't wait to reread the first two books before I jump into the third through the ninth books because it's been a long time since I've read these. Like these came out 
in the early 2000s, I think. So yeah, very excited to read these. So the next book I got has been recommended by so many YouTubers and booktubers, financial tubers, <laughs> finance tubers, finance YouTubers. And when I saw it go on sale, I had to get it. And that is The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. I've heard so many good things about this book and I had to see what all the fuss is about. So doing well with money isn't necessarily about what you know, it's about how you behave, and behavior is hard to teach, even to really smart people. So back in January, I read A Prelude to Ashes by Tiago Abdallah, and I really loved it. It was a prequel to the Ashes of Avarin series, and I was able to get A Touch of Light, which is the first book in the series, for free on Amazon. And I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, yes, yes, I have to get it, because I can't wait to see what the rest of the series is about. The prequel was really good. I really enjoyed it, and I've heard a lot of people say some really good things about this book, so I was very excited to pick this one up. A sprawling epic fantasy where religion and politics are one. Griffin riders roam the skies, and a looming blight threatens to tear everything down. Very excited to read it. So the next one I got is A Flame and Crystal Thorns by K.L. Moody, and this is the first book in the Fae and Crystal Thorns book series, and it was a total cover buy. So pretty. I mean, it's even more beautiful when it's in color. Looks a little like the Disney castle. She vowed she'd never return to fairy, but vows were made to be broken. The next one I got, uh, I was very excited to find because I'm participating in the Irish Readathon this month and I was able to find an Irish book and that is The Upside of Falling Down by Rebe Rebecca Crane. For Clementine Haas, finding herself is more than a nice idea. Ever since she woke up in an Irish hospital with complete amnesia, self-discovery has become her mission. They tell her she's the lone survivor of a plane crash. They tell her she's lucky to be alive, but she doesn't feel lucky. She feels lost. Sounds interesting. It's always fun to have an amnesia story, especially in movies. Sleep uh, while you were sleeping is one of my favorites. I love it. All right, so the next book is actually a prequel to one of my favorite fantasy books, which I have back here, uh, The Prairie of the Orange Tree. And I was able to pick up A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon, and the cover is beautiful. Uh, I did have this on my Christmas list, but I didn't get it this year, and I had already used my gift card for something else, so I when it, I got it on sale and I had some rewards points, definitely snagged this one because I can't wait to read it. I really loved Priory of the Orange Tree. I've, I've heard mixed things. I've heard it's good, but not as good as Priory, so we'll see what happens. I'm willing to give it a try. In A Day of Fallen Night, Samantha Shannon sweeps readers back to the universe of, the, of Priory of the Orange Tree and into the lives of four women, showing us a course of events that shape their world for generations to come. So the next book was another total cover by. It's beautiful. It has this great lyre, harpish instrument on the cover. It's just beautiful. So it's Durham, Durham, not sure how to say it, Tales from Tyhondria, book one, by Hetty Crane and P.J. Merchant. The bright song will get them home. The wrong song will get them killed. I love books about music. Uh, my husband and I are musicians. We've done music on and off for most of our lives and always up for reading a book about music. Neither of us play the lyre though. <laughs> so the next book was partly covered by because it's kind of pretty, but mostly I love Hades and Persephone and I'm always up for reading a story about them. So this one is Persephone, the Underworld Saga by Eva Poehler. And just looked kind of interesting. I didn't even really read much about it. Um, I did get this one free. Let's see what it's about. So unrest brews among gods and mortals alike when Hades makes a deal with the fates to end his loneliness in the underworld. So it does sound like it's a Hades and Persephone retelling. I'm always up for those. So the next book I got is Strong, which is the first book in the Armstrong series. And this one is by Janae Sherman. And again, another cover by Looks like kind of like a potion bottle. Love potions. Metro has a secret. He's a super genius and his family comes from the underground guardian race. Tired of living in his superhero wannabe brother's perfect shadow, Metro creates a serum that makes him super strong but fills him with uncontrollable rage. Sounds about right. Someone who wants to be your hero but becomes a villain? I don't know. We'll find out. 
All right, I have three left. So this one is Raven, a Cinzento Academy novel by Sue Lowe. And again, cover by Love Ravens. I'm a sucker for Ravens. So it looks like this one is compared to a Divergent, Warcross, and Hunger Games. Interesting. Love all of those. Uh, how do you fix a computer glitch that disappears before you get a good look at it? How do you negotiate with a hacker who doesn't seem to want anything? I don't know if I get Hunger Games, Divergent, and Warcross vibes from that sentence, but maybe. Let's uh, do one more paragraph. Let's see. Colorful 16-year-old Fireball and her elite team of classmates from Cinzento Secure's Corporate Academy must do exactly that. They're investigating a hack at a prestigious bank, and the bizarre network issues they've observed are turning out to be something stranger than Team Raven has ever encountered. Definitely sounds interesting. Excited to dig in and see what it's like. I was also excited to be able to pick up The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Ning Vo, and I've heard a lot of really good things about this book, so I'm excited to give it a try. And the last book for this haul is The Ravens, and this one is by Jackie Jacoby. 17-year-old Charlie Foster's power of empathy is so strong, it's probably magic. Bullied and labeled a freak, Charlie is friendless until she meets fellow empaths Bryn and Joss, who together create the Ravens, a circle for girls who feel too much, vowing that this is the year they'll rise. Interesting. That sounds really good, too. So one of the things I did notice with this haul is I got a, I have a lot of books about Ravens. Ravens in the title, Ravens in the, the series title. Um, I also have quite a few books by someone named Raven. <laughs> so if you want to see me do a vlog reading all of my Raven books, let me know down in the comments. It might be kind of fun. And they all sound like they're pretty different. A lot of them do sound like they are part of a group called the Ravens, which would be interesting as well. Have you read any of the books that I got in my haul? If you have, let me know. I would love to know what you think about them. And I am looking forward to digging into each one of these books and seeing what they're like. Future Debbie here, because I got a few more books that I wanted to uh, add to my book haul. So the first one is Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. This is the second book in the Stormlight Archives, and it's the next book in our Cosmere read-along. So the next book I picked up was The Written by Ben Galley, and this is the first book in the Emanesca series. And let's tell you what it's about. So this is an epic Norse fantasy packed with tattooed mages wielding unbridled spells, meddling gods, dragon white riders, and twisted mythology. So that sounds great, right up my alley. Okay, and then the last book I got is, uh, I won't get the physical book until probably 2024, I think, is when it comes in, but it is When Swords Fall Silent, and this is an anthology that has multiple authors in it, and it's a Kickstarter. And some of the authors are Michael J. Sullivan, Terry Mancor, Andrew Rao, Marie Brennan. I have uh, one of her series is on my list of series I want to read this year. Uh, David Doglish, R.J. Barker, Jonathan French, Peter Flannery, Bryce O'Connor, M.L. Wang, Philip C. Quantrell, J.A. Andrews, J. Boyce, Luke Chimilenko. And this book is stunning. They've, the artwork is amazing. It's beautiful. It's an anthology of short stories on an assa the assassin, so that kind of character. When the Sword Falls Silent anthology showcases the imaginations and talents of more than a dozen of the best modern sci-fi and fantasy authors. With each tale centered around one or more characters burdened with a bloody task they will see to completion no matter the cost. Every story takes you for a vicious ride through a world of shadow and death, each as unique in perspective and execution as the contracts carried out within. So I'm very excited about this Kickstarter and I actually heard about it through um, a couple of the different Kickstarters I've already participated in. MLing uh, Swords of Kaigen was the most recent one since she has a short story in here as well. So I'm super excited to get that in and there's still time. I think there's still, um, today is, what is today? Today's March 13th, Monday. So there's still 15 days to get in on the Kickstarter if you are interested in, in that. Back to my original programming. 
So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want it, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any other videos from me. And thank you so much for joining me for my Kindle book haul for Q1. Um, hopefully I don't haul too many more the rest of this month, um, but if I do, I'll have to add them to my Q2 book haul. And I will catch you later. Bye.